Okay, welcome to Measuring Temperature. This is the first part of our Science 7 unit here at Alexander Forbes School. And this is a short presentation on measuring temperature. So when we measure temperature, before we do that, we should maybe ask the question, what is temperature? And when I ask that to students, I get answers like, well, it's hot or cold. And it's when we measure degrees outside. And it's sort of how, how hot or cold something is. And when we ask, how can we measure temperature? Most people say, you know, we use a thermometer. But is there other ways that we could measure temperature where we don't need a thermometer? Well, we can estimate temperature. Most of us are very reasonable people, and we can look at stuff and decide whether it's hot or cold sometimes just by visual or other clues that it gives us. So if you look here, here's a guy welding. And we can probably tell, most people would realize that's, that's pretty hot. This is a guy blowing glass. That's a really, really, really hot sand or silicon that gets so hot it actually melts into a liquid and then we reshape it into the kind of glass that we want to have maybe a nice bottle or a bowl or something so we could probably look at that and tell that that's pretty hot it's glowing red hot or cold how do you know obviously this is really cold you can see snow everywhere there's no plants or animals living here that we can see anyway and so we could probably guess that that's a pretty cold temperature and we could probably make a pretty good estimate but estimating is not always enough. Sometimes uh, our senses can be fooled, or sometimes we really need an exact measurement. A good example is, you know, if we're cooking meat, this is a pork roast with a meat thermometer stuck into it. If we're cooking meat, we really need to make sure that it's cooked well, or we could get sick. So we don't want to just guess or estimate. We want to be sure that it's at least 180 degrees Celsius or so on the inside of that meat before we serve it. Same thing here. This is the kind of thermometer, obviously, we would use to take somebody's temperature to see if they're sick. So, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to guess. We want to know, is your, is your body temperature more than 37 degrees Celsius? And if it is, then you might be sick. So we need to know that. And we don't want to guess. We need an exact measurement. So what is a thermometer? Well, a thermometer is a mechanical or electrical device for measuring temperature. Very simple. Now, the old or earlier thermometers were mechanical. Uh, you've probably seen these before. They run on, uh, they usually look like a glass tube of some kind, and they have a liquid in there that goes up and down when it gets hot or cold. And that's certainly what the early thermometers looked like. Here's an old one built by Galileo. You may remember him from uh, learning about space science. He invented the telescope, or one of the first working telescopes. Uh, his thermometer... And, and many of the early thermometers were very crude, and they were not very accurate. But they certainly got us going uh, as far as measuring temperature accurately is concerned. So one of the most famous guys we talk about when we talk about measuring temperatures is, is this gentleman named Anders Celsius. Now, he's no longer living. He lived about 300 years ago. But he invented a scale called the Celsius scale that most of us are familiar with. And what is a scale? You know, it's not, we're not talking about like the scales on a fish or the kind of scales that can weigh things. We're talking about a, another kind of scale. And a scale in science and engineering is simply a series of equally divided sections that are marked and numbered for use in measurement. Okay, so that's all it is. It's, a, it's like these little equally divided ticks on the side of a, of a glass thermometer, an old uh, you know, laboratory thermometer. That's an example of a scale. And Anders Celsius created the first good scale that we use for, for measuring temperature back in 1742. So let's have a look at how Anders came up with this scale. Okay, so what he did, and it was a really ingenious method that he used. What he did was he said, okay, I'm going to use water as my benchmark. Used water as the benchmark. What does that mean? Well, what he did was he took, if you look down here in the left of you, he took a beaker of ice water. So but imagine a bunch of ice chunks and ice cubes floating around in some water there. And what he said to himself was, I know that this ice is melting in the water. So I know that this is the exact melting point of ice. And remember, if we're going the other direction, that's the freezing point of water. It's the same temperature. So he said to himself, I know this is the melting point of ice. So he took the thermometer, put it in the water. And then he watched what happened to the fluid inside there. And as you can imagine, it went to a certain level in the thermometer. I'm just going to guess it was right about there. 
So wherever the liquid was in the, in the in the glass tube here, remember this is Andrew's glass tube with a bit of liquid in there, and there's no ticks on the side, so we don't really know. We know that the liquid's going up and down in the tube, but we don't have a scale. We don't have the ticks on the side yet. So he put it in there. He watched the the fluid or whatever was inside there. I think it was mercury when he did this. It went up, and it stopped. So we put a tick right there, and he said to himself, he said to himself. <clears throat> He said to himself, this is the freezing point of water. And he put a little, took, probably took a, a wax or a grease pencil or something like that, and he put a mark right on there. And he said, okay, when this liquid in the tube is right there, then the temperature at the bulb down here is at the freezing point of water. And he made up a number. He said, well, what am I going to call this? And he said, I'm going to call this zero degrees. He just kind of pulled that out. It sounded like a good number to him, zero. Okay. So that was the first part. Now he's benchmarked the freezing point of water. So whenever that liquid is right there at that tick, he knows it's zero degrees. He took that same glass tube and he placed it in a beaker of boiling water. Now why would he do that? Well, because he knows that when this water down here is vigorously boiling, that it's got to be pretty close to the temperature that's the boiling point of water or the, or the temperature where water changes from a liquid into a gas or from water into steam. So because he had a vigorously boiling uh, bunch of water down here, he knew that the temperature in this beaker was at the boiling point of water. And you can probably guess what he did now. He watched this red liquid in his thermometer went up and up and up and up, and then eventually it stopped. And he said, OK, get my wax pencil out or my grease pencil or maybe use a little paintbrush. But he marked the glass tube, and he said, at this point on the glass tube now, this is the boiling point of water. So now he has two benchmarks. He's got one down there below, down here. This is the freezing point of water. And he's got one benchmark on the tube up here. That's the boiling point of water. And he made up a number for the boiling point, too. He thought 100 sounded pretty good. 100 sounded like a nice round number to him. So he said, I'm going to call the boiling point of water 100 degrees. So what does he do next? Next, he takes this space here in between 0 and 100, and he divided it into 100 equal sections. So he put little ticks there, 100 little ticks between 0 and 100. So he'd go tick, 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 and he ticked it all the way up. So there were, there were, there were now 100 equally spaced little ticks between 0 and 100. So now, if the red liquid inside his thermometer, or the whatever color it was, went up to, say it went up to the 32nd tick above 0, then he knew that was 32 degrees Celsius. If it went up to the 64th tick up from 0, then he, could, he called that temperature 64 degrees Celsius. And that's how we get the Celsius scale in degrees Celsius very ingenious experiment. So that was the Celsius scale. We also have another kind of scale, though, and this scale is called the Kelvin scale. Now, the Kelvin scale was invented by a guy named Lord William Thomas Kelvin, strangely enough, and this scale is a little different than the Celsius scale. It uses this temperature called zero Kelvin as the benchmark. And zero Kelvin, or absolute zero, is the coldest temperature possible. Lord Kelvin, it was a little thought experiment, or it was from his imagination, and he said, I'm going to imagine that there's a temperature that is the absolutely coldest possible temperature. Nothing can be colder than zero Kelvin. So why would we worry about this? Well, or why would we use the Kelvin scale? The Kelvin scale is very useful because it's always positive numbers. Every temperature on the Kelvin scale is greater than zero. So as a result, it makes math really easy. When we're using temperatures in our math later on in science and engineering, when we have all positive numbers for temperatures, it makes it a lot easier. And the divisions on the Kelvin scale are called Kelvins, not degrees, just Kelvins. So we read this number here, 273K. We would read that just as 273 Kelvin. Here's an interesting graphic that shows you the difference between the, the different temperatures. Here's where water boils. So this red line going across here. So water boils at 373 kelvins, 
or 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Water freezes. Here's the freezing point of water. That's this white line going across. Depending on what scale we're using, we have a different number for that temperature. So in kelvins, we'd say that freezing point of water is 273 kelvins. That's the same temperature as 0 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, Fahrenheit is the scale that the Americans use for their everyday temperature readings. So if you watch an American weather report on, say, an American news channel, you'll see them reporting the temperatures in Fahrenheit. And finally, way down here, absolute zero, coldest possible temperature is zero Kelvin. That's the same as minus 273 degrees Celsius or minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. So the freezing point and boiling point of water is always the same temperature, but the numbers are different depending on which scale we are using. And here's a little exercise for you to try. See if you can find where these different temperatures are on either the Kelvin, the Celsius, or the Fahrenheit scale. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching. This has been Measuring Temperature with Mr. M.